Hello everyone, this is 3DX and in today's video I bring you another stylized uh, material and if you haven't seen any of my other videos for creating stylized materials within Substance Designer I recommend that you check out the playlist that I have on my channel uh, I think it's over 80 materials now that have been created so if you're looking to learn how to create stylized materials I highly recommend you check that uh, playlist for Substance Designer. So in this one, I'm going to be creating a stylized, what I call barn wall. Um, not sure if that's the uh, official name for this type of material, it's probably not, but I just decided to create this material because I just thought it would be fun to make. And it's also not one that I have made before. So usually I'm on the lookout for creating materials that I haven't made before. And so in this case, what I decided to do is to create the main shapes of the wood boards. I used a tile sampler node. And uh, the reason for that is that if you use a tile sampler, you have control over how many boards you have and the sizing of those. You can also mask them away and do all sorts of things as well as rotate them and all of that. So that's why I decided to go with using a tile sampler and without even attaching any special shape to it, just using the default tile sampler settings. So that's going to be used as the wood uh, for the background part of the wall. And then I'm also used another tile sampler, which I use for the actual wood fibers. And uh, I think for stylized wood you can get away with using really simple wood fiber uh, details so for stylized textures you typically you typically want to exaggerate shapes and make them more obvious from a distance as opposed to when you're making realistic uh, textures where you want to make sure that your textures are really detailed and they look good from afar and from really close from a really close range but for stylized textures, I recommend just going with larger shapes uh, that are a bit more uh, chunky and just more noticeable from a distance. Because when you do when you're making stylized textures, you just want to exaggerate some of those details and you don't have to go into any micro uh, details for stylized. I mean, obviously you could, but it's not necessarily um, required to get a good look for your uh, material. So that's what I recommend. I recommend going with big shapes and combining those. So I used another tile sampler to create the wood supporting beams that go in front of the uh, wood boards. And these are a little bit more chunky and thick. So they go in front of the, of the wood. And this will also be made of wood. So I'm also reusing the wood fibers that I created for the other pieces. So one thing I recommend is whenever possible, reuse nodes. Uh, number one, it helps with, uh, with the performance of the software. So the more nodes you have in Substance Designer, the slower uh, it's going to be. So you're going to start to see that it you know, slows down if you have way too many nodes in a graph, which is why whenever possible, you want to reuse nodes. So in this case, I will use the wood fiber nodes for the uh, the supporting beams that go in front of the wood boards here. And then as usual, I typically use a curvature smooth uh, with a gradient map just to get the actual uh, color map out of the texture. Now, obviously this does have a little bit of baked, uh, what you would consider baked lighting because some of the crevices do get a little bit darker uh, because you're getting that from the curvature. But sometimes if I don't want that, if I wanted to go just a little bit more PBR, I usually just brighten up some of those spots so that there's not a lot of contrast in the texture and there are no actual uh, areas that would be considered lighting being baked onto the texture. Now you can still have things like highlights uh, where it makes sense, of course. So that's what I did. I created the 
uh, main pieces here. So we are done with the pieces and now we just need to start to add a few more details and mainly for the actual color map because right now it's just a little bit too flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the normal map and increase the intensity just so that I have the um, just so that the wood fibers come out a little bit better in the actual curvature map. So that helps for just adding more uh, colors and uh, color varies, variation to the actual color map, which is what I'm doing here. So that's something that I do sometimes. I just duplicate the normal map and increase the intensity and I just use that to get the curvature map. And just I, in this case, I used it just to add a little bit of dirt in some of the crevices and some of the uh, corners where the um, uh, wood beams connect. You obviously don't want to exaggerate that too much because then it starts to look more like big lighting. And then I just kind of increase the brightness of some of the highlights on the edges. So one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to add just a little bit more damage to the uh, boards uh, that are in the background. Uh, so in this case, I used a slow blur. As usual, uh, when you use a slow blur, a slow blur node, don't overdo it. Just kind of uh, blend it with the other one, uh, but don't overdo it to a point where it's really obvious that you used a uh, slow blur because you don't, you don't want to uh, give away know your tricks from how you made something you want to make it so that people are looking at the actual arts and not what the, uh, what nodes to use to make it and then finally obviously you have to create a roughness map for this I just wanted to keep it mostly um, kind of like a dry wood so I didn't want it to be too shiny and I used a few grunge uh, Grunge maps for that. Sometimes I reuse the curvature map, but in this case, I decided to just kind of vary it a little bit and then just merge a grunge map with the uniform color. And I also wanted the roughness for the wood boards and the beams to be slightly different just to have some variance there. Uh, but that's pretty much it for this uh, material. Here is the render in Marmoset toolback. Um, as always, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, sub to the channel if you want to see more uh, materials like this one. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Take care everyone. Do you want to learn how to use Substance Designer to create interesting materials which you can use to apply to things like environments or props? Well, in this Intro to Substance Designer tutorial, Anthony Carmona will walk you through the process on how to get started in making materials in Substance Designer. Click on the link below now to start learning how this is done. Anthony will start you off by explaining the theory behind physically based rendering and from there he will show you the ropes to get started with the most useful nodes found within Substance Designer. This is a perfect tutorial for anyone who is new to Substance and would like to learn how to get started. This tutorial also includes a bonus lesson where Anthony will show you how to present a material through lighting and rendering using Marmoset Toolbag. Hey, so this is a very short video ad, so there's not enough time to cover everything. Click on the link in the description now to get started.